is that? How the hell should I know? But we'll shoot it. Twelve fantastic Indiana Jones rip-offs and inspired movies that are pretty good. When Indiana Jones debuted in 1981, the role was never meant to be an original one by itself. Much of his looks and actions were inspired by icons like Humphrey Bogart and James Bond, and the recreation was a sort of homage to the previous cliffhanger heroes. The rise of Indiana Jones is a testimony to the fact that legends can emerge from casual roots as well. And when something of this sort gets highly popularized, you can't help but expect an endless line of imitations. Some of them work and some of them don't. Among this ocean of ripoffs, it's hardly pleasant to sort out the names which are best among the worst. But good news, we've already done it for you. Here are the top 12 Indiana Jones ripoffs that won't make you feel bad about watching them. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Librarian Return to King Solomon's Mines 2006 Return to King Solomon's Mines is the second part of the Librarian series. The film belongs to the fantasy adventure genre and focuses on the protagonist, Flynn Carson, played by Noah Weil, a librarian who has to take care of his private artifact collection. Flynn has also collaborated with Emily Davenport, an archaeologist, to solve King Solomon's Mines mystery. Now an adventurer, Flynn is determined to reach the treasure-filled mines before they come under the gaze of evil forces. As the duo team up, they use a map to locate the exact site where they can find the legendary treasure. This movie was featured on the American cable channel TNT in 2006, starring Gabriel Anwar, Bob Newhart, Jane Curtin, and Olympia Dukakis. It's directed by Jonathan Frakes. The other parts in the series were The Librarian, The Quest for the Spear, released in 2004, and The Librarian, Curse of the Judas Chalice, released in 2018. The entire franchise received mixed reviews, but the films are undoubtedly entertaining. The movie even won the Best Presentation title for the television category at the 33rd Saturn Awards. Firewalker, 1986. Two seasoned treasure hunters, Max Donegan and Leo Porter, have set out on several adventures without having a notable success. Luckily, they get another chance when they are recruited by a woman named Patricia, who also owns a treasure map. Mightily convinced herself, she tries to convince them that the plan would lead to a massive pile of gold reserves, provided they got there before someone else. She also reveals something strange. A red cyclops is after the map. Despite their inhibitions, they set out on their adventure to come back home with a fortune they had been waiting for. They meet the Firewalker, who's not ready to give away his ancestral power at any cost, but the three of them are determined too. Directed by J. Lee Thompson, the film starred Chuck Norris, Louis Gossett Jr., Will Sampson, and Melody Anderson. The movie does a decent job in terms of adventure and resembles films like Romancing the Stone and Raiders of the Lost Ark. It even manages to infuse humor, similar to what we find in movies like Crocodile Dundee. Yes, we recommend this one because you can't expect better. Gwendolyn, 1984. Gwendolyn, a runaway nun, wants to track her lost father. Along with her friend Beth, she travels to the Far East with the hope of solving the mystery of her missing father. 
The movie follows her on this uncertain and adventurous journey as she meets surprising challenges, like being captured by a band of lewd pirates. Luckily, the girls are rescued by a muscular voyager, Willard. As they become friends, Gwendolyn convinces Willard to join them for their adventurous mission to Yik Yak. Ruled by a diabolical Amazon queen and her female fetish-clad army, this country is a dangerous place to be in. Gwendolyn must defeat this queen and make sure the Amazon warriors do not capture Willard. To be successful in their mission, they need to battle with death itself. Coming from the mind of Just Jaken, a master of the erotica, Gwendolyn is an unusual quest liberally adopted from John Willie's acclaimed erotic comic strip of the same name. The movie features Tawny Katane, Brent Huff, Zabu, Bernadette Lafont, and Jean Rogerie. If you're a fan of B-movie kinky scenes from olden days, you gotta check this one out! Romancing the Stone, 1984. Joan Wilder's brother-in-law has recently been murdered. One day, she's shocked to receive some mail addressed to her by his name. She finds an old chart that looks very much like a treasure map when she opens the parcel. Following this, she receives the news of her sister Elaine being kidnapped somewhere in Colombia. The kidnappers are straightforward. She must come to Colombia and hand over the map to them in exchange for her sister. But on her way to meet Elaine's kidnappers, she is made to divert routes by Colonel Zolo into a jungle. This clearly seems part of a predetermined plan. But fortunately, Joan is saved by an exotic bird smuggler called Jack T. Colton. As compensation for helping her, she promises to pay a hefty amount to Colton. Follow these two in their highly adventurous journey to get out of the wilderness and make sense of the treasure map. This movie is directed by Robert Zemeckis and written by Diane Thomas. Starring Michael Douglas, Kathleen Turner, and Danny DeVito, this movie won the Golden Globe Award for the title Best Motion Picture, Musical, or Comedy. It also got nominated for several other titles, including Academy Award for Best Film Editing. The following year, a sequel titled The Jewel of the Nine also got released. <laughs> King Solomon's Mines, 1985. Alan Quatermain has been a famous fortune hunter for a long time. Jesse Houston decides to hire him to know about the whereabouts of her lost father. Her father was an archaeologist and had been away for an expedition in the African jungle to discover King Solomon's Mines, but he had never come back from there. It turns out that her father has been kidnapped by an evil German officer, Bachner, for his knowledge about the mines. The objective of Quatermain and Jesse is to track down this party and rescue her father successfully. But it's not going to be a comfortable ride. They need to encounter wild natives of the forest, strange creatures, and countless uncertain challenges on their way ahead. Directed by J. Lee Thompson and written by Gene Quintano and James R. Silk, this movie gives a thrilling watch experience with extensive fighting and combat scenes. It sure is a wannabe Indiana Jones film, but if you're looking for something lighthearted, then this one will pass the time for you. If everything else fails, the character of Quartermain will keep you entertained till the end. That is what I'm talking about! Sahara, 2005. A former U.S. Navy SEAL and treasure hunter, Dirk Pitt, along with his witty friend Al Giordino, go on a quest to find a vanished Civil War ironclad battleship popularly called the Ship of Death. The ship had formerly been loaded with a secret cargo, which now seems to be lost forever and consequently forgotten. While the two are preparing to leave, they come across Dr. Eva Rojas, a beautiful scientist from the UN. She informs them about a troubling dictator. 
Rojas also opines that this hidden treasure's case could be linked to an even more significant problem. As the three explorers team up to get to the roots of this mystery, they must be careful of the many upcoming challenges that include perilous warlords, a tough terrain, and several uncertain challenging situations. Directed by Breck Eisner, this action-adventure comedy was based on the best-selling novel Sahara, written by Clive Cussler in 1992. The movie starred Matthew McConaughey, Steve Zahn, and Penelope Cruz, and was distributed by Paramount Pictures. The film offers decent comic breaks and an adventure-filled quest. Overall, Sahara has received mixed reviews, but after watching this movie, you'll feel that it's not that bad and was unfairly judged by the critics. <laughs> <laughs> the Hunters of the Golden Cobra, 1982. A British soldier and an intelligence agent decide to track down the Golden Cobra, an ancient relic believed to possess some unique supernatural powers. A Japanese general is said to have stolen the precious relic during the last days of World War II. As the two pair up to secure the relic, they also need to get ready for a journey filled with nasty violence and action. Starring David Warbeck, Almonta Suska, and John Steiner, this film was directed by Anthony M. Dawson. Written by Tito Carpi, the movie got noted particularly for its depictions of violence. But apart from that, the British soldier's character might make the whole film more bearable for you. Since we're looking at recommended ripoffs, you might as well settle for this. Jake Speed, 1986. When two white slavers suddenly kidnap Margaret Winston's sister, Maureen, her grandpa comes up with the best solution. He intends to dial Jake Speed and ask him for help in finding Maureen. Sounds good enough? The problem is, Jake Speed is a character from the 1940s-style Pulp Fiction novel series. But Margaret is pleasantly surprised to find out that Jake Speed is real. Jake even leaves a note asking for a meetup with him and his partner in crime, Desmond Floyd, at a bar. She realizes later that the books she knew about were based on Jake and Desmond's real-life adventures. Another exciting thing about them was they didn't expect you to pay them. Gathering more exciting and adventurous stories for their next book was all they were after. This movie was directed and produced by a collaboration between Andrew Lane, Wayne Crawford, and William Fay. The story was written by Lane and Crawford and portrayed Crawford in the lead role, along with Dennis Christopher, Karen Copens, and John Hurt. This movie promises you solid family entertainment with a proper dose of action, violence, and light comedy. Also, this movie could be seen as both a satire and a tribute to Pulp Fiction heroes and stories. And you, why don't you clean up this mess? <laughs> Bloodstone, 1988. An American couple goes to India for their honeymoon, hoping to make some loving memories. Surprisingly, when they browse through their backpack, they're stunned to find an ancient ruby from the time of the Maharajas. The wife is soon kidnapped, putting the onus on the husband and his Indian friend to devise a plan to rescue her. In their bid to save the wife, both of them need to battle against several unexpected challenges. This movie features a very popular South Indian actor, Rajna Kant, who plays the friend of the American guy. Bloodstone is directed by Dwight H. Little, which rightfully gives the movie some commendable action scenes, and stars Brett Steinle, Rajna Kant, and Anna Nicholas as the main characters. This one should be on your watch list for an unusual experience of witnessing an American action movie filmed in India. Of course, Bloodstone is the end result of watching Indiana Jones and assuming that an action thriller would not require all that much after all. But as fans of where it takes its inspiration from, we don't mind giving this one a watch, do we? 
Water, please. Water. Well, one of you get her some water. Can't you see how upset she is? It's going to be all right. Well, I'll get it myself. Relic Hunter, the TV shows. This Canadian TV series is about Sidney Fox, a university professor and black belt champion who loves to go crazy about lost, stolen, or rumored to exist relics and antique items. When she manages to track them, she returns them to the museums, or their ancestral owners if she can manage to track them down. But of course, she can't solely go on this crazy relic adventure, so her linguistic assistant Nigel always accompanies her. If not Nigel, she also has her faithful secretaries, Claudia and Karen. Her expeditions are nothing less than enjoyable and amusing. The TV series took its inspiration from the popularity and success of the video game Tomb Raider. This series follows a very systematic portrayal of the events to come. All episodes begin by showing a short flashback of particular relics and artifacts that were abused in their time before being stolen or mysteriously lost. When challenging situations demand combat, Sydney is more than obliged to flaunt her martial arts capabilities, and she does an excellent job at that. Created by Gil Grant, the show stars Tia Carrere, Christian Anholt, Linda Booth, and Tanya Reichardt. Tales of the Gold Monkey, 1982. This TV series is set in the South Pacific about an ex-flying Tigers pilot named Jake Cutter. He now works as an air cargo service operator and flies a red and white Grumman Goose named Cutter's Goose. To give him company and ample entertainment, his best friend Corky works as a mechanic and is mostly too inebriated with alcohol to remember anything. There's also a one-eyed terrier named Jack who has a peculiar way of responding, barking once for no and twice for yes. But don't take this for granted because the terrier often confuses the two responses, resulting in ridiculous consequences. Jake has a habit of looking for trouble and adventure, and so he keeps flying his cutter's goose every week to different places with different intentions. The series was partly inspired by the drama film Only Angels Have Wings, released in 1939. But if you are wondering about the title, it refers to a mythical golden figure, which is the closing episode's highlight and pretty much all the characters are after. But funnily enough, they end their search when they find a substitute brass monkey kept at the monkey bar throughout the series. Jungle Raiders, 1985. Two friends, Captain Yankee and Jin Fizz, earn their living by duping wealthy foreigners by selling fake and exaggerated dreams. They pitch in some natives and create a phony show of having lived through fantastic, life-altering adventures in front of their innocent clients. But can they keep doing this? One day, a Colombian museum director, Maria Cortez, unexpectedly comes searching for a precious old ruby. In the events that follow, Captain Yankee finds himself being blackmailed into going for a real adventure quest, searching for that ruby. An instance of life coming full circle? This movie is directed by Antonio Margariti, starring Christopher Connolly, Luciano Pigozzi, and Lee Van Cleef. If you have watched Raiders of the Lost Ark, you might easily find out some scenes are indeed a ripoff. In particular, watch out for the snake pit scene and the kidnapping scene in an open market. Or maybe don't watch them in specific and you'll be good to go for the rest of the movie. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.